All right, guys, let's look at some examples of doing calculations uh, with numbers that are measured and then talking about how to round our answers to an appropriate number of significant figures. So the first example that I have here, I'm, I have two masses and I'm adding them together. One of them is 334.54 grams and I'm adding that to 198 grams. So I'm going to type this into my calculator and the answer that my calculator gives me is going to be 532 0.51 grams. However, remember that whenever we're adding or subtracting, we are going to round our answer to the same number of decimal places as the measured value with the least number of decimal places. So I'm going to look um, at my problem and I see that my first measured value has one, two uh, decimal places. The second value on the other hand has none. There are no digits after the decimal. So I'm going to round my answer to zero decimal places. So I'm going to keep the hundreds, tens, and ones place, and I'm going to round the ones place using this first decimal, because I'm going to round my answer to zero decimal places. This is a five, which means I'm going to round the preceding number up. So I'm going to round this to 533 grams. The second example that I'm going to show you uses division. So this time we have 34.1 grams divided by 1.1 milliliters. So I type this into my calculator and it tells me that the answer is 31 and then the unit of course would be grams per milliliter. Unlike in the first problem where I was doing addition, this time I'm doing division. So remember that whenever we're multiplying or dividing, we round our answer to the same number of significant figures as the measured value with the least number of significant figures. So this has one, two, three significant figures, and this measured value has one, two significant figures. Therefore, I'm going to round my answer to two significant figures, one, two, since the number already is limited to two significant figures, I don't have to do anything. That is my answer. A third example. This time I have three measured values, all lengths, and I'm going to add them together. 349 centimeters plus 1.10 centimeters plus 100 centimeters type this into my calculator and my calculator tells me the answer is 450.1 centimeters. Remember, we're adding and whenever we're adding or subtracting we round our answer to the number of decimal places that is the same as the number with the least decimal places. This value has zero decimal places, this has two, and this also has zero decimal places. So I'm going to round all of the decimal places out of this number this 1 is the digit I'll use for rounding. Since it's less than 4, it rounds down, and I'm left with 450 centimeters. And then one more example problem for you guys. I have two, this is a, a decimal, 2.11 times 10 to the third joules divided by 34 seconds. So when I type this into my calculator, it tells me the answer is 62.058823 joules per second. Now that is a whole lot of digits, right? We definitely need to round for significant figures. So I'm going to again round to the same number of significant figures as the measured value with the least number of significant figures because I'm dividing. And that's what we do whenever we multiply or divide. So I go back to my measured values. I've got one, two, three significant figures here. Remember that in scientific notation, all of the digits in the coefficient are significant. And that's just this right here. Leave this part out. So I have three significant figures. In the time here, I've got one, two significant figures. Two is less than three, so I'm going to round my answer to two significant figures. So that'll be one, two, I'll use this next digit for rounding, which tells me to round down. So 62 joules per second. And that's four example problems of doing calculations with measured values and rounding for significant figures.